Greetings, beloved, in the glorious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Welcome to Askulume Talk Show. This is Askulume Talk Show, where we say, let's talk about it. It's me, your host, Pastor Makiu Mtlanga. Thank you very much for tuning in. I tell you what, you have made the right decision. You have made the right choice to tune in and watch this episode today because we are going to be talking we are going to be talking good stuff today we have got a wonderful guest for today whom we are going to be discussing and, and getting to know her even more and get to hear what she has experienced and the achievements that she has had even in her life so i want you to sit back and relax and get on with us as we discuss with our very own guest today. In the show today, I have got um, Reverend S. Nube. Reverend S. Nube. You know, I, I'm still getting used to saying this. Reverend Smang Nube, who is our guest today. We, maybe most of you might have been knowing him to, knowing her to be a Pastor S, as we usually call her. But then today, I'm, I'm actually speaking to Reverend S. Nube. We want to welcome you to a school in my talk show for this. Thank you so much, Pastor Nsanga. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, we are going to be talking to Reverend S. Nube. Probably you are saying now, no, but then I know Reverend S. Nube. You're talking about Reverend S. Nube. Yes, I'm talking to Reverend S. Nube today. So we are going to want to hear more about you today, uh, Reverend S. We, you will bear with me. I'm used to calling you Pastor S. And so now I am adjusting to the new uh, title that you have, which is Reverend S. And we are going to, to get to know and understand what exactly has happened. But before we get to that, we want to let our viewers know who we are talking to. Who is this Reverend S that you are speaking to? Where, where are you coming from? Uh, your past, your background and all that. For people just in brief to get to know who I'm having in the show today. Thank you so much, Pastor Tlanga. As you have already said, my maiden surname was, is, Smangaliso Dube. I come from Chavezi. I was born and bred at Mchavezi, born at Mchavezi Hospital. I learned at Mchavezi Primary School. I did my secondary education at Mchavezi High School. It was secondary school by then. Thereafter, because of the call of God that I felt at my tender age, while I was in Form 2, read right about. Then, when I finished Form 4, when others were going for tertiary education, I went to EBI to fulfill the vocation. Yeah. So then I got married to the son of a reverend, David Lenube. And then, yeah, maybe just to pause a little bit there. Okay. Uh, and you born, I was at EBI. So, EBI, by the way, you're referring to... Okay, Egupil and Bible Institute, which is the Theological Training for Brethren in Christ Church. Okay. Theological Training Institution for Brethren in Christ Church. I was born in my life. I so, yes, as I see, Lungisa, Sachata, Gulungulas, Pussis, and went to another tattoo. Really, we continued in ministry, Lang, as I see, Saint Chatile Lae, Scottish name, Avant Ranga Chata, who ministered Lapa by it. But now we learn to any wrong a lum limb, Utumga, me, and Kutasa, young Segela, Masusongiska, that's why Melissa we are here, so, because of his support. So, I want to go back to, to what you said. You said, um, when you met up with your now husband, you yet to make sure that he understands that you are a woman who is called in the ministry. And if you are saying you love me, you are prepared to, to take me with this ministry that I have, with this call of God that I have. You are right, Mr. Mtlanga, because one thing that I was afraid of, in fact, when I said yes to him, I had made my critical analysis of his family, who he is, and his family. If family I gave him was important because, I mean, if family I'm by then, 
challenge of the Gabanda Wanga Cola. So I'm Fisa waiting in the family as an Caesar, Utilovis and Blues will lay long away. Ings are encouraged. So in the valley, you didn't start talking about it when you already married. It is something that you discussed and, and you had laid clearly before you got married that you are called to be a pastor even before you got married. Not necessarily called to be a pastor because at a tender age, you, you, you don't understand. But we are going to have a situation. We know we to see one I will have. But we are through the trainings, through exposure, through God working in your life. You, you, you come to understand the particular position. Mm. So uh, uh, you, you grew up in, in a rural setting, and I understand from the BCC, um, in the rural setting, we find that there's a, uh, most pastors in the rural setting. Would you say these are the people that probably inspired you um, to go this direction? Did, uh, was there any contribution into your life and your decision to make uh, that you made to become a pastor? Would you, would you ascribe that to them as well? To a lesser extent, yes. But to a greater extent, I think But my woman role model, Mrs. Mlocha, Duma, she's the one why I'm lecturer I'm even a Pillan Bible Institute. Right. She she really inspired me a lot and why I saw pastor she was a lecturer mm -hmm. and uh, the wit of a of a reverend. So I came to understand what ministry is all about, uh, even from a, a tender girl in I mean age in Sese in Kazanyana in Nane and uh, she used and even now she encourages me a lot and Maybe just who challenge any secret, Mr. Mklanga. I would even say, "If a halam selling you want it, oh, mama zale says we love you." I would, um, then I'm from Butata Lapana as a concerned parent, oh, mama touch way. She had to call, oh, mama, oh, Mrs. Mlocha, ambos, we don't dana lo, we from Butata we dana, we ngati nwena. Right. I, I'm from good thing. You talk about that, yeah. She's one person who really. All right. This is a school talk show. We talk about these things. We get to hear more about our guests. This is what uh, we are hearing from our very own Reverend S. And so, want I, I still want to, to 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 get into this part where you became a pastor. When did you get to become a pastor, and how did you get into this? Uh, office. I, I'm sure probably the one someone watching right now knows um, they, they, they've got a, a, a background and an understanding of, of the fact that normally when we talk about a pastor, people look at a male uh, being a pastor, but then you are a lady and you are a pastor. Uh, where did it all begin? Mr. Mtlanga, it's, it's a long story. But to cut the long story short, mm -hmm. your question is very right and relevant because we are living and we are in a patriarchal, mm -hmm. yes, patriarchal mm -hmm. uh, society, community, mm -hmm. context. That question is very relevant. Mm -hmm. But when God calls, yeah. God calls those that mm -hmm. he likes, mm -hmm. those that he identifies. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You see, you remember the young girl, Mary, mm -hmm. was called, yeah. and uh, yeah. she was told, you are going to be the mother of the king. Mm -hmm. That's one other calling. But in Nagucho, meaning I'm a Fichani, which is when I, yes. Ugova, Mumfundi, Sinjongovan, she looked at the the call of God was there, but what exactly? Yes. Yes, I found myself working in the house of God. <laughs> education, I trained as a teacher and sit to But in saying you can hang out, I always was a villa. Nivalega class in Sensech Maila, Compulam Francisco Din, Quaso Baba the church, a conangale in Kulu. So thereafter, my dinner is in style. 
let me not be a Jonah, but come back to the house of the mm. Lord. Yeah. And then when I was serving in the house of the Lord, my pastor mm -hmm. in Kwanda, O oh, Reverend Kivin mm -hmm. together with my overseer, Mkululim Tunes, mm -hmm. together with my retired Reverend Ukekana, they are the ones who really confirmed to me at different times, different okay. years, okay. would actually... You are a teacher, of course, but we see a pastor in you. Right. Because I was saying, no, I'm trained, I'm a teacher. Yes, I yes. want to go tertiary and so forth, yeah. but then, mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so uh, at some point in time, you were a, a, a teacher, trained professional teacher doing teaching at school. And then after that, then that's when you begin to say, Let's, let me take up this uh, role of a pastor. How do so? When where, where did you start? You started here at BSC Lopengula, or you you pastored somewhere else before you came to BSC Lopengula? Um, I cannot say I pastored somewhere else, but where I was serving in Kwanda, my husband is an ordained deacon. He's an ordained deacon according to Brian Christ Church procedure. Mm -hmm. So we were serving together there mm -hmm. and complementing him in the work of ministry that's when all things could show themselves up okay yes not with him all right Aye. All but right. and i want to mom to go now sense into the baptism and so forth yes. the, the, those roles for a for, for a lady local ah, and so okay. forth and so on okay. then, I was uh -huh. then and, is after completing my studies at theological college of zimbabwe then that's when I was appointed to be a pastor in this church. All right. So you, you then became a pastor at Brethren Christ Church in Lobengula. I, I would want to, to hear, and I'm sure someone watching will also want to hear, um, how did the church receive you um, coming here at BSC Lobengula and becoming a pastor there, and how did you manage to adjust? Today you are more than 12 years having been a pastor here, at, at Lopengula. How was your experience? Just in brief, tell us a little bit of that experience. I'm sure it's an interesting experience. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it's an interesting experience. Honestly, Pastor Mtlanga, when I was coming here, I gave the, the main church committee, the church board by then, mm -hmm. uh, a probation, not a probation. I gave them a time period of three months okay. for them to seek for the pastor that they wanted because I only say, no, now that you are seeking for a pastor, I'll just save you for three months, then I'll be gone. Okay. Then they retired to speak to my husband mm -hmm. about that, and then my husband is to say, okay, the church wants you to save here, and you are refusing. Since when have you started <laughs> to refuse? Then I was so That's much humbled. Yes, because I listen to him, I respect him, I humble myself, mm -hmm. I mean, to, to, to him and take note of what he says, mm -hmm. yes. So then we, I came here and I saved. When I came here, I mean, the ministerial team treated me like their own daughter, okay. like a, 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 an old member of this church. The women in this church, mm -hmm. they never sidelined me. They embraced me. I saw love in their eyes. I saw love in their actions. Mm -hmm. They used everyone, mm -hmm. the children, and so forth. I found a fitting that I wouldn't expect. Mm -hmm. When I was thinking of coming here, I was saying, Lord Bengula, yeah. such a big <laughs> and spiritual church. church. We like manage. Right. I'm from rural areas down Gwanda, <laughs> then Chavez Punale. Mm -hmm. We like manage. Mm -hmm. But through God is grace right, right, and right. accompanied by the call that I talked about. Right, I'm right. sure it was God is doing. Right. I cannot attribute anything to myself, mm -hmm. but it was God is grace. Mm -hmm. And even now, the church continually loves me, mm -hmm. supports me, and us as a family. Oh, and that's awesome. we continually humble ourselves. That's awesome. That's awesome. Um, we definitely would want to get to hear about the issue of you now being called Reverend S. Uh, we have been calling you Pastor S all along. Uh, something has happened and now we are now referring to you as Reverend S. But then what I'm going to do now, we're going to just take a short break and we'll be right back. When we come back, we'll be now getting deeper into the issues that are relating to our very own guest today, 
from being called Pastor S to being called Reverend S. So please don't go away. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back. This is a Skulume talk show where we say, let's talk about it. Let's talk about Skulume. Let's talk about it. I'm saying yes, like in the show, Reverend S. Nube, who we are speaking to, getting to understand, getting to know her and understand what has happened in her life, the experiences that she has had and the level at which she is at right now in ministry. She is a licensed minister in the Brethren in Christ Church and something that is rare. For your own information, I didn't tell you, this is the first of its kind ever in Brethren in Christ Church in Zimbabwe. We have never had a licensed minister, a female licensed minister for that matter. She is the first one in the Brethren in Christ Church in Zimbabwe. What a record. And she is the pastor at Brethren in Christ Church, Lord Bengula. I'm sure probably those in Brethren in Christ Church, Lord Bengula, right now are so feeling so proud and appreciating the grace of God for such a, a pioneering work that has been done. Glory to God. So, Pastor S, we welcome you once again to the show, and we want to get to discussing the issue that is the main, what I would say is the main meal of our discussion uh, today. In the Valley, you are now a licensed minister. You are now referred to as Reverend S. Nube. Tell us about this. How did you get to get to that level? Uh, I mean, how, how, uh, I mean, what it means to you now? Thank you, Pastor Mklanga, once again. Um, it takes lay at a reverend. It's an honorific title. It's a title of respect given to a minister of religion by the denomination concerned. In this case, it takes lay I've been given by a brother in Christ the Church in respect of not me per se, but in respect of the work of the Lord that has happened throughout the years. Maybe to be more specific for the 12 years when I've been uh, full time in this church. So, um, how do you get to, to, to become a, 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 a entitled or titled the reverend? Okay. <laughs> What's the process? Yeah. <laughs> it's a long story, but okay. I don't want to get into those stories. Yeah. Of course, I know the viewers are eager to hear those stories. Okay. This process should have happened around 2015, thereabouts. Okay. Oh. But then, but then, you know, I talked about the Jonah. I talked about yeah. such things. Right. <laughs> but right. when God says yes, no one would say, say no. no. When you God see, says yes, no yeah, one can say no. I like yes, that. I yes. like that. And so the process started, um, let me say, last year, November, when I was enthused to, to write the application data for being licensed, which is the procedure of Brother oh, in oh. Christ Church. So someone has got to write an application. Yes. You apply to be licensed. You apply to be licensed. Okay. And then you apply to the board for ministry, but then you tender that application data to the church where you are, uh, where, yeah, where you are serving. Okay. And then the church would have to sit down as a, a congregation 
and read the application letter and say what they have to say. Okay. If the church says no, that's the end of it. Right. If the church says yes, then the, the, the letter will go to the overseer with the senior pastor okay. of, the, of the local congregation. Then the, the overseer who is the pastor of the pastors, for example, in this Ebulawayo, um, uh, Reverend A. Spint will okay. look at whatsoever he will look at, right. and then he will proceed with the procedure and uh, submit the letter up to the bishop. Okay. Then the board for ministry will look at the letter, sit down, and consider a lot of things. Mm -hmm. Maybe I've got a short story to tell you. Yes. When I was asked by my senior pastor in 2015 to make an application letter. You know what I told him? I said, I think you better ask uh, <laughs> my mother-in-law. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> because in Malgazan, mother-in-law, I was not joking and I was not uh, making funny mm -hmm. out of that because I understand these issues of call are sensitive. Yeah. Because for me to come and save in the house of the Lord, while at least you've got an inter and intrapersonal conflicts with your in-laws, it doesn't work, you see. I don't know whether my pastor went, I don't know, but that's how far serious I was. Okay. But then I went ahead myself and I consulted her. She says yes. Okay. I went to my mother, she says yes. Then I went to my husband and my children. You see, so it's not that it's something that you just dream about, wake up in the morning and just start writing an application letter. So, so if I can ask the, does um, equally, the, the males equally do or go through the same process, like the process that you went through, or was it specifically because um, it was you and you felt you needed even to, 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 to go to your mother-in-law and all those kind of things. Would you say that it's the same process with the male counterparts or it was specifically for you only? Okay, that was my personal story to go to the mother-in-law, but the, the, the process of Brethren in Christ Church mm -hmm. is the same. They don't say, I know this is a lady, let us know. In fact, with us ladies, they are very strict. Okay. They are very strict because, one, we are ladies in the sense that there are a lot of things, mm -hmm. I mean, around us ladies. One is I have said that I'm a daughter-in-law, yes. you see, and uh, I'm going to be saving with men mm -hmm. issues of dress code, issues of conduct, mm -hmm. issues of attitude, mm -hmm. you see issues of character traits, they play a lot, especially with us All as right. women. It's not that you just dream and then you just go. Cool. But anyways, as for the procedure, both male and female go through the same procedure. All right. The procedure that I was talking about, and then also there is a, a, a writing of an examination. Okay. The board for ministry will choose whether or not they interview you or they give you the examination to write. Right. So it will solely depend on them. So I wrote the exam. The exam. It was wow. not easy, anyways. Uh, <laughs> okay. So the exam is also is also the same with, with the one that they give to the ma to the male pastors. Yeah, I, I right. was told it's the same. Okay. Yeah. So what, would you be able to able to some extent respond to this question? Probably someone is asking. I told them that this is the first of its kind in over hundred more than hundred years of PSC in Zimbabwe. Why so? Why so? What, what has the church, why, why have we not had this kind of, uh, of, of a situation um, where we have a lady being licensed, of which is in the process of getting ordained? Why would we, had we not had that even before? I may not be the best person to answer that question mm -hmm. because that's a governance okay. issue mm -hmm. uh, whereby the highest authority in the organization maybe is the one who is supposed to be answering mm -hmm. that question. But as for me, one, only what I can say is I submitted my application data, it was considered. Wow. 
That's awesome. At the end of the day, she applied and was accepted. And we have a reverend here today. If you are wherever you are, you can be putting your hands together. Man, we have a reverend, a lady reverend in our ministry. I remember one time I had, I had a guest who was a, who was a reverend, and we we're talking about these issues. And so I'm, so, I'm, I'm sure she is also uh, watching the, 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 this show today and, and enjoying and celebrating together with you. By the way, congratulations. Thank you, Pastor. <laughs> right. Um, one thing that is, is a fact, in knowing that climate talk show, we talk about these things. Um, there is an element of awkwardness in this by the virtue of the fact that, like we said earlier, we are in a patriarchal uh, community and even in the church as well. Um, at home, you are, the, you are, you, you, you are a wife to, uh, to, to Babu Nube, um, and in the church, you are the pastor. Um, how are you guys handling this? How are you? How are you doing it? Let me put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> the, the whole issue did not start last year or today, Mr. Mm. 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 The whole issue started in 1994 when he proposed love to me. Right. So that is when the whole issue started. Uh -huh. Yes. Uh, by that I mean he understands who Manga is. All right. Yes. All right. And uh, right at home, I am the wife to him. Right. I am the mother to my children. Mm -hmm. I am the daughter-in-law to my mother-in-law. Right. I'm a daughter to my mother, a sister to my siblings, and an aunt, mm -hmm. and whatsoever, all those titles. Okay. When I am at home, I do the home roles. All right. All right. When I am at home, I do mm -hmm. the home, home. roles. I okay. do the laundry. I wash, I make sure my family is okay. Right. All right. Yes, I, I do all what mothers do. Right. But then when we come to church, where I am serving, I'm not serving alone. Maybe if you have noticed that in all the departments where I am serving, I introduce myself and my husband, and I've always said that I'm not serving together here, I'm serving together with my husband, right. you see. So he is such a supportive man, mm -hmm. and he, I don't know if only he was here, how I wish. Yeah. But then all what I can say is, when it comes to ministry, we have never struggled. Mm -hmm. In fact, I usually say I, I be pastor of my own. Mm -hmm. So what the church sees here, it happens right. first yes. at home because he doesn't allow me to stray. Okay. He doesn't allow me to be way, way, way wide. All right. He doesn't allow me to maybe sometimes when pastors are preaching, you just get this word and it sounds so monotonous to the church. <laughs> when I get home, he says, he my to dear, you. that mm. was not a proper word. Okay. So that's why if you see myself preaching, I'll be really very cautious about oh, it. Oh, wow. Wow. That's, that's, that's quite amazing. I uh, wish we had uh, Mr. Nguve here with us. We would be also wanting to hear from him as well. But we, we, we appreciate what you are sharing with us. Um, I would want to also go back to the issue of, of this licensing that you have uh, been conferred with. What responsibilities do you now have that you didn't have before if there are new responsibilities? Because of the nature of this church, which is a, which got a vision of being a mega church, there are a lot of things that have happened. For example, you may find that there are a lot of dates such that the decons and other pastors uh, have gone to handle those funerals. Okay. So that's suffix to say that uh, some of the things that I'm supposed to be starting right now, ministry um, uh, activities, I did them since 2010. All right. For example, in Brian Christ Church, only a licensed or ordained minister is supposed to uh, handle the Conduct the, the, yeah, con yeah, conduct the, the burial okay. and uh, memorial services, and I've done that. All right. Yes. All right. And maybe during the, 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 the ordinances here, mm -hmm. I have not yet conducted any ordinance, right. but the saving of uh, the communion, communion together with the okay. deacons, I have done that. Right. So now what is coming, 
uh, on my hands, on my head, is starting to baptize, okay. starting to conduct, maybe the Lord's Supper, those um, okay. prime uh, ordinances. Right. And uh, yeah. All right. So you, you are more like you have been licensed, you have been given the right to be able to conduct those kind of, of, of ordinances, those kind of, of, of specific special services. You are right, and okay. that right, that license, lasts for a year, subject to renewal. Okay. Or if if it's not renewed, it will be elevated to ordination. Ordination. Yes. Oh, okay. All right. So we would also want to 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 speak to someone probably is a lady as well who would, who has always thought, dreamt, desired to be ordained, to be licensed, to serve in the church. Uh, at that level because you now have got the capacity and the rights to be able to freely and effectively serve in the house of God by being licensed. Someone else might want to do that. What word of encouragement would you want to give to them? What, how, what advice would you want to, to share with that kind of a person today? Thank you so much, Baba Mshanga. Maybe before I address that one, you initially asked about the responsibilities. I think it's important for me to mention that uh, I will be also dedicating the children and also taking the assignments from a higher level, maybe from the overseer and the, and the bishop at this okay. level. Right. That, that was very prominent for me. Okay. And maybe as a word of encouragement to other ladies out there, it is not about you. Mm -hmm. It is about God. It is not about urban beliefs into the mm -hmm. It's not about fame. That's what I want to say. Yeah. It's not about fame. Mm -hmm. Because fame comes with pride. Yeah. And pride comes before the before, fall. Yes. Yeah. If you start from there, I'm sure you will do right. Mm -hmm. May I encourage my dear ladies that, that if you want to, to come this far, ask it from the Lord. Mm -hmm. In your conduct, mm -hmm. in your dr especially dress code, Baba mm. Mlanga, dress code, I repeat, oh, yeah. you have to be exemplary. God have mercy. God have mercy. <laughs> yes, God have mercy because yeah, people may tell you that dress code is subjective. If you hear umzalwane kuluma ibala lelo, uguti dress code is subjective. I think it's a sign of the So, so, the, so the, the way you present yourself on the yeah. outside actually is a reflection of how you are I on the inside. I you are right. Mm. Because in the language, I am not comfortable. So when I am not comfortable, I am not comfortable. So I am not comfortable. And also, as a word of encouragement to other ladies, in this ministry, we are not there to compete, mm. but we are to complement one, one another. another. Right. For example, right. myself and my husband, we are not competing. Yes. We are complementing one, one another. another. Yes. He encourages me, I encourage him. Mm. I'm serving under my senior pastor, or Reverend S. Dewey and o Reverend M. Love. Mm -hmm. I am not competing with them. I am complimenting with them. Because right. just to cut the long story short, sexual abuses. Sometimes I but right. Wow, you can, you can tell that there is a lot that she would want to give unto you, to want to share with you and to get to understand ladies, women that do also want to be in the ministry. And even you are already in the ministry. These are some of the important points that you need to learn and uh, need to appreciate. We want to really take this time to appreciate you uh, for taking your time to be um, in this show today. Unfortunately, because of our time, we have to wrap it up now. Um, maybe one last word before we can wrap it up for today. 
Thank you so much, Baba Mklanga. Thank you, viewers, for watching me. And uh, what I ask from you is the prayer support and also to my brothers out there. Mm. Mm -hmm. But ministry Go and feign on her behalf. Thank you so much. God bless you. Well, thank you so much. This is a Screamer Talk Show. We had our very own guest today, Reverend S. Nube. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, we are asking you to let us know um, your, your, your thoughts, your views, your comments, your suggestions, your questions, and everything that you want to share with us in relation to our shows. We continue to want to give to you uh, important discussions and conversations that are able to empower you, inspire you, and encourage you in your work of faith. May God bless you. Hope to have you again next time. Bye.